Hi guys and welcome to this quick tutorial. I hope you're well. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Alex Stead. I'm a London-based travel, lifestyle and automotive photographer. But today I'm talking about my underwater work. So I've been lucky enough to work for clients who need um, like tropical destination underwater stuff. And I, about four or five years ago, I spent quite a lot of money on the equipment to facilitate that uh, and get my clients the absolute best shots. Uh, and what I'm talking about today is editing a photo I took in the Maldives. Two different photos with this Aquatech um, D810 underwater housing. So basically pretty simple, take one photo for the above layer uh, of the villa and then the next photo of the below uh, where the person was swimming. I'm going to show you how guys how, I'm going to show you guys how to put those two photos together. But yeah, if you guys are interested in this piece of equipment, uh, Aquatech, Aquatech make fantastic bits of kit. Uh, I really enjoyed using this over the years. Um, you know, it's hard work to get really good underwater shots, but it's really rewarding. Anyway, uh, let's get straight into the edit and I hope you guys enjoy. So these are the two images I was talking about. I'm going to go as fast as I can through this tutorial for you guys. And I do not want to bore you, so you switch off within um, 30 seconds. So uh, just quickly a bit of background about these images. It wasn't particularly shot well. If you're looking to get into underwater photography, it's actually a really challenging thing to do. But this was just really basic mistakes. I basically just moved the millimeter um, of the camera, I mean the lens, and I just didn't stay in the same position-ish. Um, I just didn't really plan ahead what I was gonna do later on in the edit, and that was a big mistake. But luckily it was savable and it came out as a really cool shot. Uh, basically, obviously, I took two photos, uh, one for the top focus of the main building and then one for the bottom of the person swimming through the water. Uh, it's, it's, I like the depth of field it gives, especially on this left one, but I think it's actually really cool to have both focus points uh, are completely sharp. So yeah, let's get into editing. So for my workflow, I use a selection of presets that I've developed over the last, uh, I don't know, four or five years. Um, I recently uh, started selling them online, but that's why I'm not here today. I'm not here to be like, guys, buy my presets or you won't learn how to edit. I'm basically going to put in a Dropbox below uh, the preset I used to edit this photo with. Uh, so if you guys want to try it out on your tropical photos, uh, that'd be really cool. I think presets are such a good idea to create your own or maybe um, try out someone else's. Uh, I think they're firstly really good because they speed up your workflow. Um, it makes it so much easier to get the color palette you want. And I hate when people just use presets as the final product. Presets are really base layers to your creativity. You just get the color palette right uh, and then you start to work into the images, uh, into the image and adjust certain things like white balance and different gradient tools and adjust. The preset isn't gonna be perfect, uh, but it's just such a good base layer and it's um, saves so much time. So for example, here I've got adventure, cars, uh, city, desert, snow, and tropical. And these have really um, you know, upped my workflow in terms of speed and consistency. So please do download that um, preset in the below. Uh, I'd love you guys to uh, check it out. So for today, we're gonna use tropical pack and we're gonna use number uh, 10. The first thing I want to do when editing is adjust um, the lens correction to ensure this is done. It can make a big um, overall uh, outcome of the whole image. It can change the exposure. As you can see, it changes a lot. This is quite a, a dramatic change. In some images, you can't hugely tell, but in photos like this, the vignetting's gone. It's actually up the exposure. Um, so it's really important to decide first off if you want to do it. Um, I don't always do it, I like the bouquet sometimes, but I think it's a really good thing to get um, out the way. Next thing I would do is go straight to um, white balance and get this sorted. Uh, this is another important stage to take. I'm just gonna add a little bit of warmth and a bit of a bit less greens because it's actually, very, I mean a bit more greens because it's actually very purple. The one thing I don't like about this is these. I, I as you see these greens coming, coming into some of the shadows and some of the bits of wood. I'm just gonna get rid of that and go into the HSLs to bring that down. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just add some vibrance. Uh, I might just burn the sky a little bit more. And what I mean by that is just bringing the blue luminance down and you can go too far like that. I, I see some people's edited photos like that, but I like it about that because it just gives a great contrast uh, between the blues and the clouds in the sky. I really love those uh, kind of puffy white clouds. 
Uh, I might just take some uh, saturation out the sky, not too much. And I think that's a really good balance. I know we're editing out um, the bottom, but it actually really annoys me. It's overexposed. So I'm just going to uh, bring it down like so. And actually that's a really sick image without even someone under that. I love those blues, um, you know, the water and stuff. Overall, that is, that's perfect for me. Um, I don't think there's anything else I really want to add to this image. I think uh, just with a few adjustments in the preset, I mean, I could play around with the tonal curve and just make it a bit more, uh, the black's a bit more high, but yeah, I think that's great. So basically what I'm gonna do now is copy the preset with all the settings. Uh, we might change some white balance and exposure, but we're wanting this image to be uh, as close to the other image if, as possible as it's gonna become one image, if that makes sense. Um, so go over to the other image, copy and paste it. It's on, her, it's on the wrong horizon at the moment. Obviously it's slightly lopsided. That is a bad photography trait by me but we will sort that out in Photoshop. I just wanna make a few adjustments as the white balance obviously isn't uh, the best. And also uh, the mod my girlfriend, I was gonna say model, it's my girlfriend. Um, she is not of great color. She's very green, she looks like <laughs> zombie-like. So we're also, I'm also gonna show you guys quickly uh, how you can adjust um, their skin tone to become more warm. Uh, and more, you know, natural look. So we're forgetting about any of this up here and I'm just uh, sorting out, I'm gonna quickly just to make a few adjustments on white balance uh, with clarity and uh, just quickly adjust the water so it looks how I want. I think I've got the water at, uh, nearly there so I'm gonna move on to changing uh, the person's skin tone. How I'm gonna do this is basically quite simple. All you need to do is go onto brush and change the tint and the temperature and just start painting in. You could, it might take a couple of layers um, of doing this uh, trying to get the greens right and maybe go a bit more delicately, <laughs> delicately than me. Um, but doing this gives a really good um, skin tone. But as I said, to get rid of those greens, it might take a few masks. Um, to get it absolutely perfect. So I'm gonna fast forward this so you don't have to watch me mask for the next 10 minutes. Okay, I've just I've just done that very quickly. I have not done a particularly good job um, to admit myself. Um, I would usually spend a little bit more time going around the edges and playing with it, but uh, this camera is still rolling. So I wanna get on with the next stage. Overall, I think this is really good. Um, I really like this. I might just bring a gradient tool um, down in this part like so. Uh, add a little bit of contrast, not too much, a little less brightness. Now I'm ready to go to the next stage, which is putting everything into Photoshop. Um, so export the two files. Okay, so now the photos are in Photoshop. The first thing I'm gonna do is just fix uh, the horizon on this, but I want to keep her flippers in because I think that's quite a cool aspect. If I was just to uh, crop normally, I would crop quite a lot out. But what I wanna do here is just keep the flippers in like so and I'm going to show you how you can extend your borders without uh, losing bits of detail that you want so what you need to go on is the polygon lasso tool this one up here and then just click around the area I don't think you need to be too precise unless there's a lot of detail and like so uh, sorry I didn't even show that I'll show that on this one I'm just so used to doing it so so basically you go around and then you uh, backspace and you go content aware on the fill and press okay, 100% and then it fills. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's a lot better explanation than before. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just clean up these last two, uh, you know, these bits of whatever seaweed going around. What you can do is use a clone stamp tool, which is a really effective way of getting rid of stuff. Um, so basically you just hold option and it's gonna paint that area where you first paint, if that makes sense. So it's actually a really good way of just getting rid of uh, things you don't need, or you can just use the lasso tool I just showed you. Please ignore my terrible attention to detail on the person. Look at this, this is such a poor effort. There's like white bits still left over. So please take a little bit more time um, with this edit if you're doing it in this kind of technique. Um, I highly recommend getting it absolutely spot on. Uh, anyway, so now that looks a lot better. We've corrected the horizon, but we haven't lost bits of detail um, that I really like. 
So the next thing I'm gonna do is just go onto this image and I'm gonna make a four by five crop because that is what I wanna be posting on Instagram. So I can just go up to crop, four by five, uh, make sure, and just get the right ratios uh, to drop the other image in. There we go. So bring the image in and uh, lower the opacity uh, down to, I don't know, whatever, uh, you know, the right level so you can see a bit of both and it helps you adjust um, uh, where it should be. The things I'm looking for is the ladder to line up. That's the main thing. Um, that's the hardest thing in this that I've got to make the ladder line up with the ladder over and underwater, if that makes sense. Um, Cause that's kind of the telltale signs if this was Photoshopped. Obviously water distorts stuff. So it looks bigger or smaller. Uh, but if it's in the right position, that is good. So this might take make a little bit of trial and error, trying to get it in the right position. But I'm gonna show you guys how to mask it, which is uh, honestly a very straightforward tool. Just click on the layer down here and click here. And then you've created a layer. Make sure here, down here on the left hand side, sorry, um, you it is black and white. Uh, that's quite important to make sure it paints right. And then what you do, that's the wrong bit, but what you can do is just paint and you see how it takes away down here on the layer. It just takes away and then you flip it where I showed you the black and white. So you press flip and you can paint it back in. So it's not permanent. And what I'm gonna do now is just do a bit of adjustment. Don't worry about the sky. I'm gonna fill in the sky with the right color. I'm just gonna get this absolutely in the right position. And actually that isn't a bad effort at all. It's always worth zooming in a bit and making sure the pillars are all done. But as you can see before, and after. Okay, I'm really happy with that. Um, didn't really take much. I actually attempted this a few times before and it just went so badly. I just couldn't align the ladder, but I absolutely got that pretty well spot on uh, with the ladder and the different posts underwater you can see here and here. So the last thing I'm gonna do is merge all the layers. So it's Command Shift E and that brings all the layers into one. Uh, locked and then I'm going to go back onto the tool I showed you earlier the lasso tool and just create uh, a bit of a bit more of the sky and bring it back and there we go it's absolutely you know a pretty cool image we've gone from um, you know these two images um, to, uh, to the final result which is this which is I'm really happy with you know you've got these you know, the edit's just import, as important as the two uh, merging, which is, the merging's just super simple. But going from, you know, images which are, you know, quite basic, but, you know, fairly well shot to something which is actually uh, a lot more interesting, two points of focus. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this kind of useful. It's a very basic um, edit, but I hope you found it interesting. Uh, maybe a new thing you want to try out while doing photography is maybe try focusing on two different things and then uh, merging the photos later on. Please do check out my Instagram, which is alex underscore stead. And uh, if you want to subscribe to this channel, that would be epic. If you're interested also in the presets, uh, which I used, I do sell them online. Um, if you want a kind of like base layer to your creativity. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this and thanks a lot.